welcome to the Rock and Roll to Success. You know, today is a very special day because we finally crossed the mark of 5.5 thousand people. Can you imagine? A little over a month ago, I had like 40 subscribers and now we are at over 5,000 rock stars. This is unbelievable. So to celebrate this, and to thank you guys, today I'm going to talk about some of the frequently asked questions on the road to success. Some questions that people tend to ask me sometimes. And, you know, on Monday, I got the chance to be interviewed for the first time. So it was the first time that I went on somebody else's podcast. And it was a great friend of mine, Keith. So Keith, thanks for having me, man. It was a pleasure. And one of the things that people tend to ask me and Keith did ask me was, why did you start? Why did you start with podcasting? Especially because like many of you guys know, I am naturally introverted. I am a person that usually likes to have his own space, who doesn't like to show his face that much. And you know what? He's right, man. That's the question that many people ask, and there's a reason why you, you guys ask me this. And I was thinking about it, and really, the thing is, why I started going into self-development and that kind of thing, first of all, was because, you know, I'm an engineer, and to do things in the material world, to do physical things, you need a lot of effort, you need a lot of time, you need capital, you need plenty of stuff. But to change a mindset, to change an idea, you just need a thought, a word, a sentence sometimes. So you can get so much more bang for your buck if you help people change their mindsets, change their beliefs, that it's much easier to get insane results if you work with that kind of thing. So that's how I started thinking, well, why shouldn't I do this and help other people? Because I've helped myself with these things already. I've, I've gotten things from a ton of sources. I've read a ton of books. I've done courses. I've watched thousands upon hours, thousands upon thousands of hours of videos on self-development, on how to trust yourself, how to believe in yourself, how to crush your limiting beliefs, all of that. And I've helped people all around. I've helped my friends. I've helped my family. I still help them. I like literally today I was helping my aunt and my mom with some limiting beliefs of theirs that were, you know, they were detrimental to their business because they, with those limiting beliefs, they wouldn't be able to get better clients. They would have to work too much. They wouldn't have the bang for your buck in terms of, you know, working a bit less with fewer clients, but better clients. So you can make more money with less effort and that kind of thing that I tend to help people around me with. And it was a no brainer. I thought, well, you know, first of all, I could help much more people, much I could help people all over the world if I put myself out there. And by doing this, even though naturally I, of course, the first few times I was doing these things, the first few times I went on spaces on X or Twitter for people who are a bit older, I was super anxious. Like I had those chills, that stage fright coming in. I felt it in my chest, but I knew I had to power through it and even talking to people on the DMs and whatnot in the beginning, it was so, it made me not only a bit anxious, but I didn't have the bandwidth to deal with so many people at, at once. So those things you end up needing to improve. And if I wanted to help you guys, I needed to show you guys that it's possible and show you that I could help myself first because otherwise I would be a hypocrite if I was telling you guys to do something that I wasn't willing to do. 
And so I decided to start the podcast. And first I put out some videos on my own. And then I got some friends to come in like Redham. Thanks, man, for coming. Redham, JC, all of the other guys that came later on. And thank you guys so much for coming. You were invaluable in the beginning of this journey and you still are of course and you you have my number you can call me whenever you want so thank you guys and thank you for watching thank you guys that are willing to invest some of your time watching my videos reading my stuff because you know i make these from the bottom of my heart i try to be as authentic and as helpful as i can and if there's anything else that I can help you guys with, of course, please comment, please send me a DM, send me, you know, a, a telegram, a telepathic message so that I, I can try to help you guys. And yeah, I think that covers the being an introvert and why I started hard. Then another question is, what about the name? The rock and roll to success. How the hell did you get that name from? Where the hell did you get that from? And, you know, these things are three pillars of things that I, I really like and things that I think have everything to do with what I wanted to talk about. So to be quite honest, I did some brainstorming. I used ChatGPT to help me with the brainstorming as well to figure out some of the names, thinking about the pillars of content that I wanted to talk about. But really, the rock and roll success have everything to do because rock is all about your purpose, all about your passion, your why. And then road, it's all about the journey. It's all about where you go. It's all about who you meet in your journey. It's all about getting wherever you need to go. And that's a very personal thing, as is the rock thing as well. It's a very personal thing of yours. And then finally, success is the mountain, the mount success is getting where you want to go, getting where you can fulfill your purpose and, you know, get to the mountaintop and look at the view. And I think success is also something that's very personal. Of, of course, there are things that are typically regarded as being successful. So accolades, money, being able to buy things, being having 12 trillion followers, whatever it is, there are many things that are, you know, well-regarded means of success or accolades of success or trophies. But at the end of the day, success is a thing that's very personal. So that's why I always ask people when they come on my podcast, what's your definition of success? Because I think that success is very personal. You can't, to someone being a stay at home mom might be the peak of success. And she does a great job at it. And her kids are awesome. Her husband's well taken care of. That's great. And to someone else, it might be something else. It might be being very good at the guitar or being a stand-up comedian or being a content creator and helping other people. It can be whatever it is. It may be being a good dad and having a stable nine to five. It may be having your own business. It may be traveling the world. It doesn't really matter to me what your definition of success is. What matters is that it's personal to you and that it really is true to you, to your purpose. Because when we talk about purpose, and purpose is a word that people tend to stay around, and it kind of got a meaning that nobody really knows what purpose means anymore. But to me, purpose is really thinking, why the hell am I in this world? Why did God or the Creator or Allah or whatever you believe in, the universe, a nature, whatever you believe in, why am I here? And even if you're a bit nihilistic like Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty, then you must create a purpose. You must find your purpose 
the why you are in this world and live it, truly live it until the last day of your life. Because the thing is, we want to get to the end of the world. We want to get to the end of our lives without any regrets. We want to get to a point in which we can look back to our lives and say confidently, I did everything that I should. I can die today and I can truly rest in peace because every day, day in and day out, I did everything that I could to make myself better, to improve the world somehow, to teach someone something. I did everything that I could that had to do with my purpose. And in a not so nutty nutshell, that's the purpose of the rock and roll success to help you guys unleash your inner rock star. And what I mean by that is basically to find your purpose and to do the things that will help you fulfill your purpose in your life so that by the end of it, you can say confidently that you have no regrets. What else? So another thing that people ask me sometimes is, why don't you make a course? And I've tried doing some courses, actually have some things on Gumroad that I didn't actually finish and actually put all the videos and everything so that you guys could buy them. But really, I think one reason that I didn't follow through and actually go and do a course and market it and everything is that I really want to know what you guys want from me. Like, what could I help you more with? Because there are so many things that I've learned and that I've done in my life. And I know that I'm very good at learning new things and breaking down concepts. So I'd really like to know from you guys, what do you want to learn? What do you guys want to do better in your life? Like, what's the thing that's hard is for you guys because some of the things that I like to talk about and that I'll keep talking about anyways like leadership like business like how to conquer your fears and do some public speaking that kind of thing I will keep talking about this anyway but I think that there are some uh, nuances of the things that I talk about that maybe you guys could say hey Gabe maybe you could do a video about this this or that and if it makes sense, of course I'll do it. I, I want to do things that will help you guys, like truly help you guys with the challenges you have in your personal lives and in your business lives. And actually come to think of it like business, you can't extrapolate business from personal. It's at the end of the day, it, everything has to do. It's all interconnected, right? Another thing people ask about the book that I'm writing and it has all to do with the rock and roll to success. The name of the book is the rock and roll to success. And it's all about the three pillars, rock, road, success, and thinking about how I can be the most authentic possible and talk about some of the lessons that I've learned in my life and things that were hard for me at the time and how I went through them, the tools I had to use, the lessons I learned and I'm I'm having I'm doing the outline uh, currently. I actually should have finished last week, but I think it was a good thing to to give me a bit more time to think about it because I think I'll end up doing something even more personal. But at the same time, like I was talking to my friend Keith, who is an author or and who has published an autobiography this year. The things that people end up resonating more are the struggles, are the things that we end up thinking that are more niche and thinking that no one really cares about. But at the end of the day, those struggles are the things that people will say, yeah, I had something similar. I lived something similar. You know, I had a similar struggle. So I'm thinking about which struggles are the most important and the ones that will help you guys the most. And talking about struggles, another thing that people tend to say, like, you're so positive. You have this positive attitude. And it's funny to me because, you know, I, I wasn't always like that. I, I had some times that were quite dark and I went through depression and, and that kind of thing. 
And, you know, some of my family members, naturally, they have like this kind of dark sense of humor. And it's not something good. I mean, it might be funny to people who like that sense of humor. But when you start doing those self-deprecating jokes, those things that aren't really that good to your self-esteem and to the way you see yourself and others around you, it ends up not being like looking from a pragmatic lens. It's not good for you. So I had to cut out a lot of those beliefs and a lot of those self-deprecating jokes and, and also some of the politeness because some of my family members tend to be over polite and think about other people too much and not think about their own needs and their selves. And this is not good as well. You, you don't want to be selfish, but you also don't want to be someone that people can trample on. So this is another thing that I had to learn and that probably I'll have to put in the book anyways. But yeah, I, I wasn't always so positive. And it's something that I had to learn how to be more positive. And actually, it's funny that a few days ago, I started revisiting this book, The 16 Laws of Success. That's a compilation of the, the books by Napoleon Hill. And Napoleon Hill is very famous for some of his books like Think and Grow Rich and Smarter Than the Devil and some other books that he has. And there are so many books by him or inspired by his work. And he's one of the goats. And this book was very useful to me. As a matter of fact, the first time that I got a job and it was my dream internship at the time, it was a job that I really wanted to get. I had this in my backpack. And one of the questions that the guy that ended up becoming my boss at the time asked was like, so do you like reading? What do you like to read? That kind of thing. And I said, yeah, I, I love reading. As a matter of fact, I have a book right here that I'm reading right now. And then like I, I got it out of my backpack and I showed it to him. I, I talked a little bit about it. And this book helped me so much. And I didn't even remember how much it had to help me. And it's so funny because I even have... Um, yeah, no, it's, it's stuck. It's so old that it got stuck. But this is a random page that I used to take notes on. This day was August 28th, 2017. And I went to my psychologist at the time. And I took notes about this. And, you know, it's funny because some of the things that I talk about here about uh, my social repertoire or about there's literally something about low self-esteem yeah literally self self low self-esteem and frustration and having clarity about the difference between those and desire like it's so funny some of the words that i i wrote down over here talking to my psychologist at the time and how he was helping me get through some of those hurdles. And it's funny because some of the laws in this book have everything to do with things that I typically say and write about nowadays. And it had been years and years since the last time I picked up this book. And literally the first law that it talks about is creating a purpose. And that's something that I tell people all the time fucking time that they should have consciousness of their purpose and what the hell they're doing in this world and what do they want from their lives and then it talks about mastermind it talks about self-confidence about it, uh, economics like um, not um, using all the money that you get and leadership, initiative, imagination, enthusiasm, self-control. So a bunch of things that I didn't even remember that this book had such an impact in my life. And that's the thing with 
all of this that I talk about in self-development and everything. You might watch one of my videos, you might read a book by someone like a Tony Robbins or watch a video by a Owen Cook, uh, Julian Block, some of the guys that influenced me a lot. And you might not even notice, but some of those things, those little seeds will stay in your brain because not only the bad influences stay in our brain, stay in our soul, the good influences do as well. So some of those seeds might stay in your brain and you won't even remember where you got them from. And this happens a lot to me, but they will be there. And sometime, someday in the future, God knows when, a few years down the line, somehow they will click. Something will click in your mind and you will use that. You will use an example. You will help someone else. And dude, rest assured, this will happen. And it will happen soon if you keep on this journey. And I've been on this journey for probably over a decade, definitely over a decade, actually. So yeah, maybe another another question that people ask me sometimes, and I hadn't even put here, like, how did you start with self-development? And I think that as a young man, you probably know the answer if you are a young man. Girls, do you really need me to tell you guys? So why do guys start with self-development usually? Because they want to get girls. That's the thing. Because you want to be a bit more confident. You want to talk to girls. You want to ask someone out or whatever it is. That's usually how guys get into self-development. And that's the reason that you know, some of the biggest chads end up not developing themselves that well because they don't have the incentive from a young age. But yeah, basically that's the whole reason why it started, I guess. But I mean, in this kind of self-development, because some other types of liking business and that kind of thing, I remember from a very young age, like maybe I was 12 or something and I wanted to buy books about business and so I, I was a very weird kid. So don't take me as an example for anything like that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for the 5.5K. You guys know that we will reach 1.2 million by the end of this year. And now I have another goal that's to reach 1 billion people by the end of 2030. And I'm sure we will do both of them. And I want to help you guys as much as possible. And I want you guys to help the people around you. That's how we will reach more people and become a bigger and bigger band, reach more people to make them rock stars and to unleash the inner rock stars inside of them. So thanks again for watching. Please share with your friends. Please subscribe, comment, follow my newsletter as well. Keep rocking, keep rolling, and read my t-shirt. Good things are coming, okay? Thanks, guys. Keep rocking, keep rolling. Let's go.